Um, I'm going to call the select board meeting to order Monday, June 3rd, 2024. And I just do want to welcome our new town manager, Brent Raymond, to his first select board meeting. Thank you. And with that, um, we do have our town attorney in the audience, and the select board will need to um, have some business with him. So having said that. Um, I would move to go into executive session because I find a premature general public knowledge of probable civil lit litigation to which a public body is or may be party will clearly place a town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiating uh, strategy. Point of order. Don't you have to change the agenda items before you do that, or can you just go ahead and do that? I believe I can change the order of the items. And since executive session is already on there, and we're going to do additions and deletions when we come out of executive session. Which is intended to last how long? And that's on my notes here. And Jamie, thank you for reminding me. We're, it, the plan is 20 to 30 minutes. Probably at most. Probably at so. most. Yeah, okay. The reason why this is flipping? It's because our attorney's here and he's on the clock and we're thinking to uh, to save some money. We should get to it right away. I was going to start the meeting by saying when he did show up that we were going to recess and okay. so but he's got the wet bar somewhere. <laughs> I, I, I can share I can share this with share you if you'd like. So I do have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. I move to go into executive session to discuss the probable litigation of the provisions of Title Sec Title One, Section Three Thirteen A One of the Vermont Statutes to include Attorney Jim Barlow, Town Manager Brent Raymond, and Interim Town Manager Kerry Johnson. I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by George. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. Both of those would be unanimous. Okay. So we'll recess upstairs. That's right. It's 548, and I will reconvene the select board <coughs> meeting. To make a motion to come out of the executive session. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to move to come out of executive session at 548 with no action taken in executive session. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. So I'm going to reconvene the uh, select board meeting. Additions and changes. We actually have uh, a change. We have a request for two right of way applicants for easements to place monitoring wells on the corner of Pleasant and Portland Streets. And in the audience today, we have uh, Stephen Hilfiker of VHB who's here to provide a brief summary and to answer any questions. Okay, and we'll put that under number one for new business? Yes, please. We'll put that in. Okay, good. Um, and also, I'll just mention that under number 10, executive session, that the board will be taking some action under number 10 at the end of the meeting tonight in regards to what just occurred in executive session. And that's it for addition, additions and changes. Okay. Uh, Number three, approve the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from May 6, 24? Move to uh, accept the minutes of May 6, 2024. So I have a motion from Chris to accept the minutes. Second. I have a second by George. Any discussion? Comments? All those in favor of approving the minutes from May 6th, say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. New business then, so right away permits. We have uh, Steve Hilfiker from VH, VHB in the audience. And uh, if you want to come forward and just introduce yourself. <laughs> it's my understanding you have a couple of right-of-way requests. 
I do. Um, so my name is Steve Hunter with DHB. I'm a project manager and geologist uh, with DHB. Um, we are assisting the Moyle County Planning Commission with uh, Brownfields investigation uh, around the area of 140 Portland Street uh, at the request of the state of Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. So in order to better understand how soil vapor associated with uh, chlorinated VOC release, volatile organic compounds, um, We'd like to put in some soil vapor points beneath the paved roadway of the surface because those contaminants and soil vapor typically migrate through utility corridors because in most instances they're backfilled with the material that's a little bit more permeable than the surrounding native material. And so that can be a preferential pathway for those contaminants to migrate around. And of course, you've got the laterals that connect to those mains and utilities that then connect the buildings. So for the right-of-way permits, the soil vapor points would be, be six of those in the paved roadway. Um, you know, be installed down at about five feet and then completed uh, with typical surface completion. Uh, flush mounted road box and a concrete apron sloped in a way such that the plow trucks uh, ideally would not pop them out when they're plowing. So the concrete apron would slope up to the elevation of the road box or try to have a request and so forth. Um, the monitoring will be installed in similar fashion. Flush mount of the box, and that's being installed to evaluate for these same contaminants of groundwater. And I assume this is going to interfere with normal traffic flow? We've cited these locations not on top of the utilities, which can be in the middle of the road, but right on the edge. Um, unfortunately, we didn't want to push them off of the road to avoid going through paved surfaces because that's getting a little bit too far away from you know, the intensity of the investigation. So the plan is just to put them right where our cars would be parking if there would be a parking spot up against the curb. Okay. So the traffic wouldn't be impeded. And we'd have cones out there and signage to let people know that we're coming for our high vis vests, et cetera. Okay. So, and this would uh, and this is going to occur relatively soon. At least that's your request. It is. On June tenth, drillers are hard to pin down. So we have drillers scheduled for June tenth to install the soil vapor points. And then the week of June 24th, we'd have a bigger rig out there for the monitoring well location. Um, that's on the portion of Pleasant Street that enters into Railroad Street there. And we're hoping we can site that one a little bit closer to some of those parking spots that are against. Can I say one more thing? And there, there's, there's two permits here. So do we need two separate motions? I have two recommended motions. Okay, great. So and, how long are your, um, your wells going to be in place? Ultimately, for a little while. Um, so DEC would like those to be there in case any follow-up sampling uh, would be required. One, to confirm the results of the initial sampling, uh, and two, to monitor any corrective action that might occur in the future. So if it was up to the DEC, they'd like them to be there until corrective action is completed, and there's not really a timeline in place for that. It depends on funding availability, et cetera. And when you're done, do you put everything back the way it was? We do. So when the, when the point is removed and everything's closed up, is that, is that the question? Yes. Yes. So we understand that some towns and uh, departments may have requirements for how the asphalt is sealed. Um, so that would be What's your estimated time of actually the monitoring before you actually send it off for testing? Do you know it? What's the normal testing time or the monitoring time? Sure. Um, well, let me know if I'm not answering your question yeah. correctly. Uh, so we we installed the location, so these soil vapor points will be a fairly quick install with this uh -huh. nimble drill rig. We come back 48 hours later to sample it. We got to let the subsurface equilibrate for a little bit after we've disturbed it. We collect the sample. It takes two hours to collect the sample, uh -huh. maybe a couple minutes extra just for setup and take down. Um, and then the laboratory turnaround time, the laboratory. Well, I think it was shy of two weeks. So you mentioned uh, a date of the 24th for monitoring. So that's that. So that's, that's a, the process that would be the separate groundwater monitoring. 
So okay. the sole vapor points would go in on okay. June 10th, and then we come back with a different rig because we want to look at the data collected from the sole vapor before we put that monitoring well location in. And we have that in our work plan, and so that's why there's a, a delay between the two different installation plans. On your application, it shows that the dig safe um, uh, ticket um, expired on May 26. Do you have an updated um, dig safe, or once you have one, is it in perpetuity? Because it has an expiration date of May 26. We just want to make sure that if we make a motion to do this and you have an updated permit, that that's part that that would come to the municipality just so we have that record. Yeah, understood. Uh, so that initial dig safe permit was put into place, realized we needed this right away permit. So I have renewed the dig safe uh, ticket request. So I have, it looks like they gave me an updated number with that renewal. So I'll be happy to provide that documentation to you or read the number out loud. Yeah, uh, actually, you can just furnish the town manager the updated information. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate it. What, what are the dimensions of the caps or the covers? So it'll be, it'll be very similar to what you may have seen in that area, um, if you're familiar with those streets, but I want to say they're four inches, no bigger than six inches for the actual metal pad there. Okay, and then a little bit of a slope up with concrete to load it? Correct, yeah. So we either try and recess it a little bit so the plow trucks don't hit it, um, mm -hmm. and then slope up the concrete, maybe just a hair, so that it doesn't, the plow trucks don't catch the lip of that metal. Protected. So, what about the monitoring? Well, it'll be the same. <laughs> same. Yeah, it'll okay. essentially you know, look the same as this. Okay, yeah. thank you. Just what's happening. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions? You said you had some motions. Thank you very much, Steve. So, I have two recommended motions. The first is for the select board to approve an exterior soil vapor monitoring point as per the right-of-way permit submitted by applicant Eastern Analytical contingent upon an updated dig safe permit. Yes. Would you like to do them? Yeah. Do them one at a time. Um, <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the external soil vapor monitoring point as per the right-of-way permit submitted to, by the applicant Eastern Analytical contingent upon an updated dig safe permit. Second so that motion. We have a motion by Richard, a second by Chris. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. I make a motion to approve a groundwater monitoring well permit as per the right of way permit submitted by applicant Parrot Wolf Incorporated to contingent upon an updated dig safe permit. Second. I have a motion by Richard and a second by Chris. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for coming in. Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. So I need a motion to recess the select board meeting. So I move to recess the select board meeting, open as the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. Second by. Grab Sarah. Does second by. Speak to this. Oh. Sarah's oh, here. There you are. Hiding in plain sight. Thanks. So we are now in, uh, oh, sorry, we have a motion by Chris and a second by George. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. So we have a liquor license. My understanding that Jason is okay with all these licenses? Yes. Our chief of police, thank you very much. So we have a motion for a liquor license, uh, CO Grocers Group, LLC, second class. Yes. So, um, CO Grocers Group LLC has both a liquor and a tobacco license. They're the old Max, the old Jiffy Mart. Looks oh, like right. they've changed hands. Um, they already have a license for this year, but it's new management, so they have to apply for new liquor license. And do we need to do those separately? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I need a motion to approve the liquor license for CO Grocers Group, LLC. So moved. A motion by Chris, second. Second. Second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 It would be unanimous. They aye. also have a tobacco license application, same story. 
I would entertain a motion. So I'll uh, move to approve the tobacco license application as presented. I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. Second by George. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. And then there's a request to cater permit from Rock Art Brewery at NCAL. It's an open house event on June 8th from 2 to 6 in the afternoon. They're guessing 100 to 150 people. Renee has and I have both reached out to Jason and he had no concerns. Great. Thank you, Sarah. So I would entertain a motion for Rock Art Brewery LLC and their um, so I would move to permit. approve the special event permit as presented. Okay, so I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? A second. A second by Laura. So all those in favor of the uh, application by Rock Art Brewery LLC, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. And I'll move to adjourn the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Second. A second by George. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. I move to reconvene the select board meeting. I have a motion to reconvene. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? All those in favor of reconvening the select board meeting, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, road names. We have two requests, two applications for road names. The first is uh, Twisty, Twisty Maple Drive. And uh, I think we, the plan is there is a small development going in there and the road does need a name. And uh, so we are here to approve that application. And um, it's my understanding the administration does not have any concerns associated with this. Okay, any discussion by the board? And this is off of uh, Sterling, Sterling Valley Road, I believe. It is. Yes. So I would make a motion to accept the new road name, Twisted Maple Drive. They uh, would like to install a signpost. Um, that is, they would like to uh, install a signpost um, at a location approved by the town. And it's clear that this is not intended, nor is it a public road. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. Second. I have a second by George. Discussion. Now the application talks about a road name change from Sterling Valley Road to Twisty Maple Road, <clears throat> Twisty Maple Drive. So I think on, on the map it just shows yeah, it just shows a road going off of Sterling Valley Road. It's a it's a road with no name. Yeah, it's a road with no name exactly. Okay. So just wanted to be clear on that. I was wondering too, because we're not changing Sterling Valley. No, we're right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. We have a second road name change. And that would be a uh, road name change from Elmore Road to Gabriella Lane. And this is similar in the respect that uh, the landowner is putting in a subdivision. And because there is a subdivision going in, it does require a road name. So I would make a motion to um, do a road name change from Elmore Road to Gabriella Lane. It's a private road. Um, they would like to have the town of Morristown to install the sign and post and that it is not now, nor will it be a public road. I have a motion. Second. I have a second by George. Any discussion? <clears throat> I'm just curious because it does say that um, the new road change will change the neighbor's address. Yes. And so it's my understanding that, again, the landowner needs to change, needs to name the road means the abutting landowner has to change okay. their address. There doesn't seem to be any any that. easy way around this, right? Yeah. I think we can all understand the... I don't believe they're here. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 Just, 
interesting point. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Okay, number um, number three <laughs> under new business. Award the billing scholarships. We have uh, two scholarships that we award, and uh, I believe Mr. Craig would like to make a motion. I'd make a motion to award the two billing scholarships for this year in the amount of $500 each to Fallon Forest and Kendall Van Plunk. I would second that motion. So I have a motion by Richard and a second by Chris. Any further discussion? Yes, Sarah. The school invited me to go and hand out the scholarships, but I don't know if really it should come from the board and if the board wants to um, go. It's Wednesday, June 12th from 8.15 to 10 in the morning. June 12th from 8.15 to, to, 10. to 10. And Sarah, I, I did, you and I had talked about this and I was, was happy to go up and do this presentation, but when I found out that Richard had a close connection with these two students. I I'm think I'm going to look at my schedule there and see if I can go. One or both of us will be there. So, do we have to warn if three of us show up? Well, yeah, communities, you're welcome to sit in the audience. I will. Yeah, yeah. good. This is great. So, yeah. there's, yeah, this is, this is really nice. Uh, all those, in, uh, do I have a motion? I do. And I have a second, second. too. Yep. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. Approve the financing for Walton Bridge. So we have in front of us three bids. In front of us three bids. Sarah? So Sarah, treasurer hat now. Um, <laughs> I put out four bids. This is the bids for the Walton Road um, that the voters voted on two years ago. It might have been three two, years ago. Two and a half two, years ago. Yeah. At this point, um, we're finally at the point where we need some money to pay for it now that the project started. Um, I put out four bids. Only three um, came back. Union Bank at an interest rate of 5.49. Community Bank at an interest rate of 5.99. Community National Bank at an interest rate of 6.17. My recommendation would be to go with the Union Bank because they're the lowest bid. Thank you, Sarah. Do I have a motion? I would move to um, a second here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, I think I'm one step ahead of myself here. I would move to accept a bid from Union Bank for the capital improvement note to finance the uh, repair and replacement of the Walton Road Bridge uh, for an amount of $510,000 at a fixed rate of 5.49% interest for a term of 10 years. Do I have a second? I'll second that. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by Richard. Any discussion? Yes, yeah. tell applications have. These are semi-annual things. The, okay. Thank you. The math worked that way, but I didn't see it. So okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. And thank you, Union Bank, once again for helping us out as a town. Sign the annual financial management questionnaire. We have in our packets the questionnaire. This is, as the name suggests, something we do annually. Sarah? Sarah again. So um, this is something that we do annually. Um, you just have to um, receive it from me. I complete it. It's part of our internal controls. It's something that we give the auditors. It's um, just me going through and um, looking at how the management of Finance is done from the treasurer side of things, um, and then I present it to you annually um, so that you you know what I know and I don't know. Okay. Thank you. So you want to do a motion? 
Um, just a motion to receive it and um, that the chair sign it on behalf of the board for um, receipt. It's not approving it, it's just receiving it. Okay, great. I would move to receive the annual financial management questionnaires presented by town treasurer Sarah Haskins and appoint uh, Don McDowell chair to sign the form on behalf of the board. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by George. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Number six, sign the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department Agreement. This is another annual contract that we, we do. Uh, Brent, do you have a few comments on this? Yeah, so the uh, Morristown's amount is uh, $152,922 this year. Um, and that's derived from the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department's fiscal year 2024-2025 total budget assessment. And that assessment's based upon multiple factors that the county sheriff uh, considers when they're making the budget. How Morristown's percentage is calculated is based upon 50% coming from the population portion of Lamoille County. And that equates to 18.906% of the total cost, which is $90,330. And then the other 50% is from the grand list. And that's 13.1% of the other half, totaling 62,592 for a total of 152,922. Great. Right. That's, that's a 3% increase from last year. Correct, yeah. So. Thank you, Brent. Uh, we do need a motion here. I so, okay. so my question would be, um, as a contract, is this something that the town manager signs or does this have to be signed by the select board? Um, I believe the motion is for Don to sign it. Um, let me just quickly check. There is space on the contract for all five names, but Right. I didn't know if uh, yeah. I would authorize that. I would make the motion to um, agree to the contract presented by the Lamont County Sheriff's Department for fiscal year starting July 1 through June 30, uh, July 1, 2024 through June 30th, 2025 and authorize the town manager to sign. Okay, I have a motion by Chris. Second. And a second by Laura. Any discussion? Question. Do we have the money in the budget for this number? We do. Yes. We've, we anticipated the 3% vote. Yes. Great. Thank you. Come on up to the microphone. Identify yourself, please. James Brewster. Um, <clears throat> I brought this up uh, some time ago, um, more in a budgeting capacity. Uh, but this figure of however many thousands of dollars it is, is taken and divvied up by three. Police, EMS, fire. Um, I would wager a guess that EMS and fire are burdened with an unfair amount of the cost of these dispatching services. Um, I would wager a guess that police probably uses them more than anybody else. So either now or in the next budgeting season, I think it would be prudent and only fair to EMS and to fire to weigh out these dispatching duties and figure out exactly how many calls is each one of these getting and then divvy up those portions appropriately. I'm sure that EMS and fire, if you could alleviate some of those costs, could use those money elsewhere within their budget to do other things. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Flood, mitig mitig flood mitigation grant. So I'll speak to this. Um, we've had uh, this, the flood mitigation grants and program has been sponsored by LCPC, Lamar <coughs> County Planning Commission. March 21st, we had the first meeting. May 6th, we had a second meeting, which was just four weeks ago. It was four weeks ago tonight. I've attended both of those meetings. And on May 6th, we found out um, 
that the state of Vermont has been awarded $91 million for flood mitigation programs, which, and we can thank our Senator Peter, Peter Welch for that. He pushed this through, not just for Vermont, I'm sure for other states as well. But uh, there is $91 million there. We have a deadline of June 21st to decide if we want to be part of this granting, this grant process. LCPC has a meeting planned for June 13th to continue this conversation. We have a select board meeting on June 17th to con continue this conversation. What I'd like to do tonight is simply just throw out um, or begin this conversation. Tonight is intended to be an FYI, not intended to take any action at this point. Uh, it's my understanding that the village trustees will have a very similar conversation on Wednesday this week. Um, and just so everyone knows, not only have I attended these meetings, but Bob Henu, chair of the village trustees, myself and Scott Johnson, who's in the audience tonight, um, we had a meeting and we just brainstormed a bunch of ideas to to get this ball rolling because we were on a very limited uh, uh, time frame. So we we just threw out some ideas here, and I guess one of the, I guess what I'm asking, if nothing else, we can certainly have a conversation about this tonight. But if nothing else, for the select board and the public to begin to think about what can we do in Morristown to protect ourselves or to begin and help to protect ourselves against future flooding events. They're going to happen. I think we all agree. We all know it's coming. Um, we don't know when, but but it will. I think it's, specific, it's fair to say. Is there a specific scope for what, what we can do? Uh, yes, and what I'll do is I'll just throw out some ideas here and generate a discussion that way and, um, and, and see where this goes. I, I'm sure on the 13th, on June 13th, when we meet with LCPC, we're going to get some more, you know, get a, get a better framework of what this might be like, but at this point, it's just an open conversation. It is, it is a good chunk of money. I mean, when you do the math on a, on a per county basis, 91 divided by these 14 counties in the state of Vermont, there's, there's a good chunk of money. There's millions of dollars that um, we're potentially looking at that could, could come to Lamoille County and obviously a portion of that to, to Morristown. Um, have we brought Todd Thomas into this conversation? As, Todd, as, as the flood, regional flood. Scott, yeah. Yes, we should. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging him. And I think he's been invited to these LCP, okay. LCPC meetings as well. So here's just a few ideas. Um, Oxbow improvements. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Oxbow. Is there something that we can do down there to protect the Oxbow? To utilize it in some advantageous way to you know for some future um, flooding event, creation of new floodplain. This is something that neighboring towns are doing. Johnson is doing this. Wolcott's looking very um, very hard into this. By the way, there's. I think it's safe to say. Well, I think it's very safe to say Johnson will be applying for this grant. Cambridge will be applying for this grant money. I think it's very safe. Wolcott is very interested interested in this as well. And personally, I think being on the Lamoille River, Morristown ought to be very interested in this. This idea of creating new floodplain is something that our neighboring towns are looking into. Um, lowering stream banks and giving water a place to go before it heads downstream and struds and uh, floods the you know critical infrastructure that we have. Um, Lake Lamoille, enhancement of Lake Lamoille. Could we use that in some way to uh, enhance flood mitigation? Bridge, municipal well recharge protection. Uh, the municipal well recharge protection, of course, the trustees and the, and the village are very interested in. Um, municipal well relocation, again, another, another important issue for the, for the village. And um, a sixth one, and again, I'm just, these are just brainstormed ideas. There's, there's no ownership necessarily to any of these is, and this might be really interesting to us as a town, but getting money, accessing money so that we can do an inventory of our roads, get an inventory done of our culverts, 
of our infrastructure that we might likely lose in a future flooding event. Um, we've seen infrastructure dis disappear in the last, you know, last uh, 12 months, and that, that's another idea. So I'm just going to throw that out there, um, and if the board wants to discuss this, or if the board just wants to take this as is, and we'll come back to it on the 17th. I think on the 17th, we might be looking for some action from the board to uh, um, authorize the submission of a grant, an application for, for a grant money. Is this, um, Scott, do you want to speak to the trustee side of the equation? Sure. Um, first, I just would respond to your question earlier, Chris. There are categories um, in the pre-application form that I looked at when we did this brainstorming session. So, and it's also important to know that there is a local match requirement for most types of projects of 25%. There, is, where you, when you think about things like um, creating a new floodplain where you might have to buy out a property, the state also has state money to basically cover the local match for those types of projects. So it's a bit of a mishmash, but there is a lot more guidance coming, and it's it's still kind of fuzzy. Let me just put it that way because the pre-application form that's the first step we just basically a notice of intent it's a one page web form to fill in so there's not a lot of meat there um and you put your ideas in and then you get some things will get screened out so there is a fair amount of guidance but it's still kind of fuzzy is what i would tell you in terms of the criteria in terms of the the couple items that came from the trustees on this list one was dredging out lake lamoille um that one I think is pretty unlikely. The state hates dredging, um, and so I, while it's a good idea, and I think we should be able to do it, I don't think it will do very well in funding. The other two from the trustees, one is um, reload, relocating municipal wells. We're actually pursuing that directly with FEMA um, because we the last two floods have both, both gone right through well two, um, and so we're looking to move that further uphill towards uh, 15A. Um, and further away from where World 2 sits. World 2 is the one that's right next to Tony Bridge. Um, yeah. And in last July, there was about three feet of water on top of that. Um, and in December, it was about halfway up the, the facility. Um, so it hasn't run since last July, um, obviously, because we'd rather do a mitigation project. So we probably don't need to put that in for this initiative because we're working hand in glove directly with FEMA. The other one is still in the same location. I mean, if you've gone down, um, 15A recently to Tinney Bridge, you can essentially see where like where the Memorial River now wants to go. It wants to go <laughs> right through, I think it's the southerly bridge abutment of the Tenney Bridge, mm -hmm. um, and right through well two and right towards well three. Yeah. There's like a path just blazed right there. And so the notion on that one that the trustees will consider is to armor that bank um, so that it has to turn the corner like it historically has done. I can't tell you if that changes because of higher waters or the realignment of the Tenney Bridge or both or some other reason. Um, we've talked to VTrans. I've actually tried to get their attention to say, by the way, you might lose your bridge. <laughs> you know, if you look where that water wants to go, it's right through that bridge above it. Um, so that's what we've talked about so far. I'll get more input from them on Wednesday night. But the notion is if we can get there, and um, Don didn't raise this, uh, so I'll say it. Um, what the, the purpose of the dialogue of the two chairs and I was to see if we could actually find a, a common projects to collectively apply um, as two bodies together right. rather than compete with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the idea and the spirit. It doesn't mean we have to do that. It may be that we have really competing ideas after this these two rounds of discussion. That's okay. But the thought was if we can come to common ground, wouldn't it be great and a stronger application if we applied together? Yeah. So that makes all the sense. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the major impetus of, for the meeting for the three of us. So the uh, the deadline is that the you were saying the the deadline that we have to meet. That's the single page, so we're not dealing with the that's the pre app. I think just a I, for a however many line. projects we have to put in. I think I could do them in 10 minutes a piece or less. Um, okay. It's That's really good. as simple of a form as I've ever seen in my life. So, right. um, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not the one at, at, at one with the computer. So, yeah, I so once it gets narrowed down, then we build out. What I'm anticipating is that the process is going to be swamped with these pre-apps. They're going to look at their criteria and do what I've done, Don, 
you know, was a, you know, I did a little bit of pre-analysis based on the criteria as they are. I wouldn't take yeah. that to the bank. Um, they're, they know what their criteria are and you know, 60 percent of everybody's going to get told go away bye bye thank you for your time yeah. and 40 percent are going to say hey now you've got a 20 page application to fill out we invite you to apply I, my guess is that's what you're going to find out mm -hmm. so round one couldn't be easier round two is probably going to be quite a bit of a work yeah. yeah that's what i would anticipate i don't know that yeah no that makes sense that seems the norm yeah. uh, my only question with any of these is uh, and it goes back to Oxbow is that, you know, before we start asking for money for Oxbow, I think we have to decide what we want Oxbow to be, you know, so then before we start making, because, you know, and my argument has always been, is it a revenue generating venue or is it a complete community space? They're very, very different uh, uh, views. Uh, if you look at Burlington, like Burlington Waterfront, they decided years ago, it is a revenue generating space and everything is geared towards that aspect of it. Um, and so I, I just would like to see us be clear about what we think Oxbow, before we start asking for this might, you know, do this, that we're clear about what we want to do with Oxbow. Absolutely, agreed, yep. And remember, those were just ideas yeah. that were brainstormed very quickly, and, very little thought. Yeah, this and I is think the first the time this is really clear. Yeah. I just think we should be clear, uh, especially for this process, that if we aren't very specific, they're going to be like, we're just not giving you money for a park. Yeah. You know? We just felt we needed yeah. to brainstorm some stuff because yeah. this is the first time this board's had a chance yeah, to no, talk about I think this I at just all. want us to go in yeah. looking as strong and professional um, yeah. as we can because we want to get as much of this money as we can. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I believe uh, Brent and I are going to try and attend that June 13th meeting. Yes. So. I think my name would add is there is some sort of, I don't know how much we're going to talk about this, but there's statewide training going on this week um, about these various mitigation opportunities. Uh, there's one on Thursday that I'm going to attend in Montpelier, and I'll be able to report back for, to both. Thank the, you. Morristown and to Thanks the trustees so to let you know what I learned. I, I think I'll probably get some insight about all this in a little more detail, um, but I'll let I will report back um, all what I learned on Thursday. Thank you, Scott. I'm, I'm really in, uh, I love the idea of the infrastructure analysis, the really taking a good look mm -hmm. at all the culverts so that we don't get into a, um, because that hasn't been done and it's something we need to do. But if we could roll it into this and well, you can thank your you can thank your new town manager for that idea. Yeah. So he came yeah. up with that today. That's a great idea because Scott, if there's any potential collaboration, you guys, gotcha. I think we would be what's that? Pardon me. I think it would be uh, we would be missing our fiduciary responsibilities to the community if we didn't begin this exploration. Agree. Um, it is. We know that we know what's coming in, as you say, some of our infrastructure is in need already. Um, and the numbers are just immense. I mean, some piece of 91 million is going to turn into a pretty good sized number. And whatever we can do with that, if we can get it, is something we don't have to ask the taxpayers for, or at least a, a minimal match for it. And I, I think we've got to move forward, yeah. is my opinion. Well, so our homework then before the next meeting then is to brainstorm among ourselves any any other possibilities. Jamie. James Brewster. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Uh, just in terms of the, uh, the infrastructure uh, idea, um, if it fits, uh, possibly consider looking at the storm grates on Elmore Street. Uh, if you've ever gone down Elmore Street when it's a torrential downpour or any rain, a lot of those storm grades do absolutely nothing. They are designed in such a way that they're about three feet off of the curb and the pavement tilts into the curb. So all the water that's coming down Elmore Street goes right around the inside and bypasses those storm grades. They're not catching any water at all. Not that that was a design problem on our part, but whoever did design it didn't think too much about it. Thank you, Jamie. 
Any other discussion before I move on? Well, that's very exciting. Okay, so old business. I think Carrie, you are on. I am. So the only item we have under old business is Gelts Road. Um, we have a few different requests for information on Gelts Road. Um, so I wasn't going to go over our whole timeline, but we did create a timeline um, of where we've been and where we want to go in the future. That's on um, our website, it's on Facebook, and it's on our Facebook forum. Um, I just want to set realistic expectations because it's a huge project, as we all know, um, potentially very expensive project between five and seven hundred thousand, and we're now working with FEMA, so we're no longer on our own timeline um, because FEMA has um, said we qualify, this project qualifies, but you know they'll pay up to eighty-seven percent, which, for reference, is over six hundred thousand dollars and a seven hundred thousand dollar cost. So. They, um, they were very supportive. We've met twice with them now. Um, and so most recently we met with them as a kickoff. It takes a little bit of time for these guys to process things. So we met with our whole team. Um, and then a week after that, they went out to the site with Kevin and Tyler and evaluated the site for um, their estimate. So, um, and we separately have signed um, a contract for, for the bridge maker. So we did go out to bid this spring um, and went with the vendor who was certainly qualified but who could get us the bridge faster. And I keep using bridge and culvert interchangeably because they're both culvert, but at the size that we have to replace it, it's not technically called a bridge, but it's really just a big box. Um, I think it's curved actually with a flat bottom, but it's called a bridge. You know, it's just a very really large, long, long term culvert. So at this point, the town is done what it can really do we're waiting on fema but more importantly we're waiting on a contractor that could come in and actually do the work right we're well we're going to go out to bid for the site work so the site work people obviously work with the bridge maker um and tyler is helping us uh, with that and so we're waiting for those that to come back but we also have to work with fema when we do anything now um, so that includes that site work contract yeah. Um, and and there's a couple other estimates we're waiting for from um, from some vendors, both from Tyler and one other person. So um, we don't let a week go by, a very early a day go by without um, actually figuring out if, if that falls in our court and we're going to get it out as soon as we can. There's a state match as well. Is that correct? There is some state money there as well. Yes, I don't remember that percentage off the top. Head, it was like seven and a half percent or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and that should be that if you have the roads and bridge standards approved and, and a couple right. other criteria. So it really it narrows down. It does, yeah. right. Substantially. Yeah. Right. It was nice um, also when we did the credit. That is a disaster. Just to follow up on what Carrie said, um, last week I asked Tina to follow up with FEMA about status, and um, that prompted somebody from FEMA to ask us further questions. We responded same day. And um, so that little delay has been moved through. And um, I think that was a final step, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, Carrie. Any yes, questions, you. comments from the board? Carrie, can you clarify something for me? I'm sure I'm not reading it properly. In the um, memo that you sent us, like what the April 17, 2024 says, the lowest bidder stated the earliest the bridge culvert could be delivered in 2025. And to that, in April of 2024, there's a phrase that says, sign the contract with the bridge manufacturer for summer 2024 delivery. So one sounds like coming in 2025. The other one sounds like it's coming 2024. Are there different things that are coming in different times? Just help me with it. Yeah, no, I understand the confusion. So when we went out to bid for that as well, because there's no huge culvert and bridge storage, you have to get it customized. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first, the, the apparent low bidder was that that other vendor who said, it's a little bit cheaper <coughs> and we're going to promise to get it to you in 2025. Okay. And we said, well, we can't wait that long. Yeah. We don't want to wait that long. This is a major road. So Tyler um, went to the second bidder um, and they worked with us and said they could get it to us this summer. Okay, so follow up for that then, Carrie. I appreciate that yep. clarification. 
that under contract with, we're under contract with that yes provider. yep they're already working through their engineering and processing to make it takes a while and it has to have time to cure yep. Yep. All that, so. and is the delivery date of summer soft 2024 in the contract or is that it just is, their it, best estimate no it is in the contract i thought they said june but i don't want anyone to get mm -hmm. yep. like i okay. well contractually we've got a we've got a, a framework we do yes. signed with them not yes they're trying the best they can but no right okay. tyler's been pretty good about okay great specifications. thank you both box thank you george any other discussion from the board Okay, I will move on then. Um, approve the warrants. I would move to approve the warrants. I have a motion to approve the warrants. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the warrants, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Community comments. <clears throat> Come on up to the microphone. Identify yourself, please. So I'm the company, Cody Hill. I just want to thank the highway department for coming up, fixing that culvert. They made it look pretty. It doesn't work. It's eight inches too high. So the water sets. Um, and just one other comment, now that we can't see the sides of the roads anymore, anywhere is because of the grass is this high and the leaves are in. We'll be awful lucky in this town not to have any more washouts. Now the Stagecoach Road washed out back in that Halloween storm. Big washout. And I mentioned it four or five months ago when there was nothing to do. The ditches need ditching in this town and not just on Cody Hill. I'm over it. I really don't want to keep coming up here, coming here or any of it. But when it happens, when it washes out, that's the reason why it's going to wash out. I take that stagecoach road every morning and on the downside to stow, it's washing every little so bit. Now you can't see the ditches though, because the ditches are, they're, they're, full, they're full grown. It really should have been dealt with probably four or five months ago, and it was not. I can count on the right side of Stagecoach Road, I can probably count eight or nine trees, big trees in the ditch when, when, when you can see them. You can, and obviously you can't see them now. So just keep it in mind. Yeah, I'm done with it. Mr. Cody, Thank you, Tony. To follow up with you, have a meeting, meet your, your place. Hey, don't you? Mm -hmm. 224 6766. 6766. Thanks, sir. Hi, um, I'm Alex Sear. I live here in Morrisville. Um, because the governor signed House Bill 546 today, which creates new abilities for towns to have local option taxes without having a charter. Um, I think that the select board should at some early opportunity consider whether that is still something that needs to be in the draft charter. Although the, of course, the Department of Finance has the opportunity under the bill to limit it to five um, towns moving to have an option, ta option tax under that possibility. Um, per year. Um, I think the select board should also consider whether any changes to timing on a vote on that would be prudent and the viability of a truncated um, charter going forward if that's removed. Yeah, thank you for that. Just so you know, there will be a discussion coming up in a few minutes about the next charter committee meeting. So thank you. Alex, what's the number? Uh, Other the bill? Yeah, it was a miscellaneous tax bill. Yeah. Other community concerns? Okay, so moving on to schedule. Um, 
We have our next select board meeting June 17th at 5.30, and the following select board meeting will be July 1st, at, also at 5.30. I did meet, I did mention some meetings earlier in regards to flood, flood mitigation. Other business, so, I guess. So can I just ask a question on the schedule? Sure. Because, you know, we did not do anything in terms of charter discussion, LOT discussion in the month of May. Um, is there a time that we want to schedule a special meeting, either prior to a select board meeting uh, or another day, and make sure that all the parties, including the community members, can attend and maybe do it as a separate meeting so that we don't have a, a finite time uh, to do that. This is this is a most. So this important is next thing. on my list. Okay, the most important thing that we're going to do this year. So this is next on my list under other business. Okay. Threw it in there. Uh, we're planning a next charter meeting. We have not reached out to all the members of the charter meeting right now, but just wanted to get that out there for uh, June 24th at 5.30. And that would be a meeting that would not be before a select board meeting. So it would give us a little bit more time to continue the meeting if need be. So that is June 24th at 5.30. So I guess I'm, I'm uh, not all the members of the charter committee are represented here, but if people can nod their heads yay or nay. And, and if they're uncertain, get back to Brent. Um, regarding that so next meeting. So that's a date. plan. That's a target date. Yeah. Okay. All right, and would we do, still go at 4.30 or would we? We'll go at 5.30, I'm sorry. Yeah, 5.30 on the 24th of June. Yes, sir, I think it's really important that we get the majority of people that were citizens on the committee to be in attendance. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. agree with you, Richard. Yeah. yeah. You can send out an email tomorrow to everyone okay. and uh, check in for availability. Yeah. Okay, so we just wanted to announce that tonight. I have to say, I would certainly yeah. like yeah. and I certainly would defer to the uh, the commit uh, to the residents because I think it's key that we get them in. So I think it's yeah. more important that they're here that they agree. are here than we are here as a majority. I agree. So I can I will. So Brent, you'll reach out to them tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. So this is not solid by any means. Right to be arranged. Yeah. Okay. Item number ten. Uh, the board has already gone to gone into executive session. It's my understanding that there may be some action the board wants to take. I'd like to make a motion to approve the boundary line agreement between the town of Morristown and Five Park LLC and authorize the vice chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Do I have a second? I'll second. Do I have any further discussion? Slowly. And I <laughs> Sorry, Mr. I'll Mr. say it right now. Sorry. Sorry. I make a motion to approve the boundary line agreement between the town of Morristown and Five Park LLC. And that, sorry, stop. That, that is, is the that. library and Guthman's building. Okay. And authorize the vice chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Any additional details as why this is happening? Why the agreement is happening? Uh, I, I will just say the reason the vice chair is signing is because the chair of the select board recused himself from this discussion many, many, many months ago. So that's why I'm not listed there. Other than that, I can really tell you nothing because I haven't been part of any of the conversations. It's pretty simple. But... It's just a clarification on the boundary line yeah, between the town of Morristown and yeah. the Five Park LLC. Right. Just to, there was some confusion about where the line was and we've got a real resolution. Yeah, fairness. Can I ask a question? Does it affect the cemetery and the entrance to the cemetery? It does not. No. I know that. Yeah. Good question, Jamie. Thank you. Sorry, Jamie. I'll Any? Sorry. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> There's some legal, so I'm I'm glad glad I don't think that's I want you to. <laughs> Any? <laughs> Any further discussion regarding the motion as presented? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. That would be four to zero with one abstention. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. 
I have a motion to adjourn. I have a second by George. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion? Aye. That would be unanimous. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, folks. Thanks, everybody.